So we are in a, a place whereby knowledge is being created, knowledge is being shared, and knowledge is being discussed. To create a niche for the health sector, to create a niche for the youth empowerment programs, to create a niche for women empowerment and the whole empowerment that we have as a society. On behalf of ECA and uh, on my own behalf, I'm honoured to welcome you all to this public lecture on addressing the financial freeze for achieving sustainable development goals in Zambia. And as ECA, we are grateful for the commitment of our partners to foster engagement and dialogue on issues of economic growth and development uh, in our beloved host country, uh, Zambia. Sub-Saharan Africa as a region is being hit by this funding crisis. And there are three ways in which we can see how this has manifested itself. The first one of these is that borrowing costs have increased in Sub-Saharan African countries, both on domestic and international markets. Now for Zambia, of course, what's interesting is that your eighth national development plan is very well aligned with um, the SDGs. You've got a very high alignment of 87%. Um, that's not necessarily duplicated um, throughout. High alignment around economic transformation, job creation that we spoke about already, human and social development, environmental sustainability, and a good governance environment is really critical for pushing Zambia forward on its uh, growth trajectory. Agriculture is what has been feeding and getting people out of poverty. And we neglect that. Classic case this year, after people, you give them the message, diversify, invest, you come and tell them, sorry, we don't care about agriculture, we care about mining. It is time we should also start to change the narrative. Instead of talking about the funders, we should be talking about partners. Instead of talking about aid, maybe we should be talking about markets. And you know, we can only talk about markets if we have identified things that we can actually put on the table. So that the discussions is not about how much are you willing to give us in terms of offering. Because I mean, I have not left anything home, we have nothing. It should be about, oh, this is what we have, this is what we can capitalize on. This is what we can take advantage on and how can you then uh, support us? How could you then uh, help us to uh, achieve that? We have everything it takes for us to grow, to improve ourselves. But what we see? Confusion from the politicians. I think something should change. We have the, the capacity to change. We have the capacity to grow. We, sh we should stop this mentality of depending on the West. Yes, we are built, they know. But let us not look onto them. Africa, Zambia, we are very rich. How is it possible that, in terms of computing those figures as IMF, do you take the sub saharan countries as aggregate uh, variables or sectors, or you get countries independent? Because if that's the case, how is it possible that different countries, about 45 countries in sub saharan that may have the same problem at a particular time? So you have been very, very much genuine to give us the help that we need. However, it's not just about the IMF, it's about the SDGs. These are target goals that you want us to attain. But how do we attain them when, when, when there is nothing, there is nothing in reality to show up for it? It's just on paper. We can agree. Zambia's devoted, Zambia's done this, Zambia's done that. And you people have been so consistent you know, you've been so consistent in trying to help us financially. But what are the results? It's not just about the process, it's not about the talks, it's about the results. Year after year, to find sustainable development goals in uh, developing countries, it would cost between 3.3 to 4.5 trillion dollars. If you add the cumulative GDP of most, of most developing countries, it doesn't even get as far as that. We can go for help outside when we haven't yet found proper solutions to deal with uh, situations that are ground uh, root or grass level. So I think this is a call for youths, this is a call for the people in government, this is a call for everyone to first start set, setting out situations that are ground 
root and that grass here. Well, let us go into the deeper of uh, Zambia to understand what is going on down there so we know how to work out things even as we come to the top level. The majority of Zambia's financing comes firstly from its domestic tax revenues, so the money that they collect from uh, businesses and individuals here in Zambia, and also from commercial debt. So when we look at the borrowing of Zambia, but also when we look for the region as a whole, three quarters of the debt is actually commercial debt. So it's Eurobonds and it's domestic debt. So it's the Quatcha bonds and bills that are issued 